Well, I'm pleased to say I'm heading out on the kayak again. And I'm really hoping today to get a, a decent session to fish the whole tide. The reason I say that is it's like a mill pond at the moment. And this is just, just about dawn in the morning. But the forecast is this afternoon for the, the winds to really pick up and uh, some more, more rain. I've had enough rain lately, more rain coming in. So I don't know, but the idea is that I'm gonna fish most of this session at anchor. I'm gonna drop the anchor, put a couple of bait rods out, fish on the bottom, see what I can pick up. But at this time of year, November, there should be some whiting around and fingers crossed some decent sized ones, but you never know. But might get lucky and pick, pick up something else. So I've got some great bait with me. I've got some fresh, some fresh lugworm, um, which should give me a bit of an edge. And I'm gonna fish that tipped off with squid. Um, but I'm also going to, I might fish a little bit of the session, disconnect from the anchor and drift a bit. Um, see if I can pick up some mackerel, see if I can pick up, pick up some squid. But basically just play it by ear. But it's, I'm really hoping I can get to fish the whole of the flooding tide. I've got a great, great tide today, spring tide, plenty of movement, um, but we'll see. I know I should be okay till about midday. After that, who knows? Right, so that's what we're doing and just get out there now and, and get this anchor down. Right, what I'm doing here, I'm just using the GPS and to try and position the, the kayak where I want it to be. Um, I'm just pausing at the moment just to see which way I'm drifting. And we're on the ebb tide at the moment, but of course in an hour's time it will turn round and we'll get the flood tide. So basically what I'm actually trying to judge here is where the kayak will be on when the tide turns. And, and there's no wind at the moment. And if the wind picks up, and um, what direction it's gonna be. Um, yeah, I want to, I want to try and get it just to, just to, um, where it starts drop, dropping down position the kite before where it starts dropping down a slope into a into some deeper water um, and the idea being that when I got these bait rods out and I let them go they'll they'll drift down with the tide and they drift down to the to the bottom of this slope into this deeper water so basically I'm trying to get it close to some contours now just dropping an anchor anywhere in open ground is dead easy of course but when you're trying to do what I call precision anchoring you're you're literally trying to get it into get it more or less in a on a particular spot then um, that's that's a, that's a different matter of course I mean I'm, it's very difficult to get it absolutely spot on because one of the problems is of course you swing all over the place but if I can get it as as best I can in the position I want, um, that's great. But it's uh, to me it's worth it's worth, it's worth taking the time at this stage. Other, otherwise, if I completely mess it up and I'm way off where I want to be, it, it means I'm going to have to I'm going to ha have have to up anchor. And reposition again, which is which can be which is annoying. Right, that should be more or less once I get it down where I want to be. Down she goes. Let's hit the bottom, so we'll let out some warp now fortunately here it's it's not going to be uh it's not super strong tide so i don't have to do the three times depth couple of times couple of times depth is 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 enough now as i as i said 
in, in the position I'm in now. I'm right on a contour. That's where I am. And when the flooding tide comes, the kayak will swing round and I should I should drop be able to drop those baits right at the start of a of a, a little stretch of deeper water. That's the theory anyway. Okay, so I've got two rods down now. We're still on the ebb tide. Still got a half an hour before the tide starts flooding. Um, when I get them back in, we'll, we'll have a look at the rod, the reel, uh, and the the rig that I'm using, and the baits. But basically, I've got fresh lugworm and and squid. And I say, well, we'll have a look at the setup uh, when I, when I pull one of the rods in. Well. Well, I got my first bite on this rod on the left here, and I suspect it's small white. And I, am, I yeah, I am going to get pestered today with small white in, but I'm just, I'm just hoping that there are amongst them. Yeah, there's nothing on. There's probably very, very small white in. Um, I'm just hoping that there's some. Uh, some good good size autumn whiting that will move through. The tide is is flooding in now, so that's good. So fingers crossed, a, f a few uh, decent fish will move through. At the moment, all I've had is tiny little pin whiting, which I expected. But what I'm after is is the, is the better size whiting and and whatever else I can catch down there. But for those of you that are interested, I'll just go through the tackle that I'm using. I've got two boat rods, these are both 7 foot 6 long and they're both 12, rated 12 to 20 pound. Then we've got 6,500C multiplier loaded with 30 pound braid. I like to use braid here because it's deep water, it will get to over 100 feet later. It means that the thinness of the braid, it will cut through the tide, which means that I, I can use less weight than if, than if I was, let's say, using nylon, which, is, which would be thicker. So I can get away with probably up, at the moment I've got four ounce, I probably won't need to use more than five ounces at this particular mark, so that's good. Obviously the lighter the better, rather than having sort of six, eight pound, pound of lead and things like that. And then at the end of the braid I've got a rubbing leader, 30 pound clear amnesia, just a little bit more than twice the length of the rod. But the important bit, down the end, the rig, I'm just using a straight, simple running ledger for this trip. So I've just got a boom to hold the lead, then a swivel, and then about a trace of about three and a half, four foot long, which is 30 pound clear amnesia. I've got a panel rig, two hooks, fairly decent size, just in case you never know, I might, might get lucky and pick up a, a codlin. Two, two size 3O hooks on a panel, and I've got threaded up the line about three or four lugworm. They're not very big, these lugworm I've got, so I've got three or four. And then I'm going to tip it off with either a strip of squid or the head of a calamari squid. So that's basically it. Got exactly the same on, on both rods. And fingers crossed, now that the tide's flooding in, and it is a good tide today, nice spring tide, should be plenty of movement, a few decent sized fish will move through. Well, I've got both rods going at the moment, the one on the right and a bite on this one, so... Um, Kicking a bit, this might be um, slightly better whiting. Yep, if it was a maybe. Well, that's a bit better. It's be it's better than um, what I've been getting. I've been getting the tiny little ones, but. Uh, All right, I better deal with this one.
Now they're getting better. The whiting. This feels about a fish, whatever it is. And it is. Yeah, it's a it's a a better whiting. That's more like it. That's the that's the whiting that I'm after. I'll try and show you what I was talking about earlier when I wanted to anchor in a particular position. Because now the tide's uh, well into the flooding tide. I'm, the kayak is sitting in the position that I wanted it to do. I mean, it's swinging a bit, but I don't know if the camera will pick this up, but you've got a contour line there and another contour line there and beyond that I've got a waypoint. Now that's where it, so what we've got from that contour line down to there is a slope going into, I can't hold this camera steady by the way so apologies if it's shaking, um, into here where you've got a slightly deeper hole. So you can see where I am, I'm right on the contour line there which is basically where I want it to be, or thereabouts. So now when I'm lowering these baits down, it's going down tide, and it's going down into the, the beginning of this hole here. So that's absolutely perfect. So slope from that contour line to that contour line, it slopes down, drops flat into, into, into a hole there, which is where, where, my, bait, where my baits are going now. Ah, this is a better one. That's a better one. Nice whiting. Well, I mentioned, I went, I mentioned this morning how. It's due to uh, pick up, the, the, the wind's due to pick up and it's now just coming up to midday and I can feel it now, it's just starting to, to pick up now. So we'll see what happens in the next hour, hour or so. I've, stu I've still got um, just about three, three and a quarter, three and a half hours left of the tide up to high water. I was really, really hoping to fish the whole of the tide, but just got to see how, see how this weather builds. And if necessary, call it a day. Because as I said, I know it's, it's not just sort of forecast to, to pick up a bit this evening. It's forecast for 
40 mile an hour wind so that's what it, that's what it's going to build up to as the afternoon goes along well i've been just catching tiny tiny little whiting and uh i was thinking oh, i think i'm going to call it a day before this weather picks up more but uh, it looks like i've got a a reasonable one coming in here I'm pleased to say feels like it anyway yep that's good Now then, could this be the the fish of the day? Certainly feels the weightiest anyway. Uh, might be a dogfish, but it's now it's knocking, so could be a, could be a decent sized whiting. It is good. I've just uh, I've just got fishing the one rod now to finish off. I've pulled the other rod in, and the reason is I can feel this weather building up now. It's it's still okay. If it stayed like this, it would be fine to fish the rest of the session. But because I know the forecast is for it to get very very strong lately uh, later, I I don't know how quickly this is gonna this is gonna build up. With as I said. Uh, nearly 40 mile an hour winds coming in this evening so it, it could really build up, build up quickly so just going to give it a short while with the one rod I've got a load of whiting so I've, so I've had a pretty good day and a few decent ones I'm going to up anchor in a minute while the, we while the weather is still, is still okay then I might finish the session just paddle up tide a bit and then stick, put the drift chute out and then drift home um, just to see if I can pick up pick up some mackerel uh, to, to end the session with but yeah I can definitely feel it I can definitely feel it building and building and building so we'll we'll, we'll call it a day in a moment now could this could could this be the best the best fish of the day it's certainly um it's certainly uh banging well And it is a codlin. For those of you interested, the legal landing size limit for cod in Cornwall, believe it or not, is only 35 centimetres. And this one measures 42 and a half. So it's well over the legal landing size limit. But the other thing uh, with this cod is that it's very, very deeply hooked. Hooked right down in the, stu right down in the stomach. So it's, kind, it's kinder for me to take it anyway than, than, than put it back. Okay, you can cut the line, but got it up. Part of the stomach has pulled out. It's, it's kinder in my opinion to to take it home and eat it then put it back in in that in that uh condition even though it is only a, a little a little small codlin but never mind get a couple couple of 
a couple of nice fillets off of that and that's going to that's taste absolutely fantastic. Right, time for me to up anchor now. It's definitely starting to pick up worse now so we'll get, get the anchor in and, and drift in and see if I can pick up, pick up a few mackerel. I've up the anchor now and I'm just going to finish the session, drift in, see if I can finish, uh, pick up a few mackerel. Uh, so I'm basically just paddling, paddling up tide a bit just to give myself a decent drift and then drift on, drift home. The drift, the drift will take me uh, more or less home so that's great. So paddle up up tide a bit and I'll put the drift chute out and see if I can pick up one or two mackerel to finish off the session. I didn't have time to finish the video off yesterday just needed to get in and get sorted and home so I've kept these give them a good wash when I got home and kept them in the fridge overnight so as you can see there I've got a good tray of of nice white in there and then of course we've got the boat the bonus the bonus codlin and then three of the of the really good size white in that that I was hoping for at this time of year. So all in all, it was a really good day. I'm really glad I got up now early to take advantage of that weather window, but I'm also glad that I decided to up anchor when I did before it got before it got very rough, which it did last night. It did come in with those strong winds, very strong winds that were forecast and and the rain. So well worth taking advantage of this weather window. All right, so I've got to get all these sorted now, filleted, some to eat fresh and some to freeze down, of course, to eat another day. So once again, I hope you found that useful and many, many thanks for watching.